which is All Quiet on the Western Front, the 2022 adaptation of the classic, classic novel from uh, Eric Maria Remarque. Um, Dave, I mean, if I had to just give you like my initial thoughts after finishing this movie, it's that, man, war is fucking stupid. And the fact that we continue to engage in it is just like ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, the, the the mission statement, the thesis of All Quiet on the Western Front, just as strong a hundred years later. It, it would seem to be effective with you. Yeah, I, I, I agree. You know, I think it's obviously anti-war novel adapted multiple times, of course, most famously in 1930 to film, which was the third best picture winner, lest we forget, anti-war movie. And I think this one, 2022, all Quiet on the Western Front definitely hits just as hard and you have those same takeaways and it's unfortunately just as prescient and relevant and thought provoking today as it would have been, you know, in 1930. And in a sense, that's a depressing thing to think about. But yeah, I think this was a really compelling adaptation. And I think a big part of that is this is a German uh, adaptation and it's the official German uh, submission for Best International Feature Film at the Oscars this year, so stay tuned if it does get nominated. Uh, but the reason I think this is a high-level adaptation is that the filmmaking is quite top-notch. With this, you have a really uh, effective, memorable score. You have, I think, really high production values. And it, it, overall, it, it's quite convincing. You know, We've come a long way from the 1930 version, which, of course, was in black and white. You know, this is a bit a, a, a bit further along you know and it it doesn't have like the gimmicky flourishes of 1917 but this version of 1917 world war one still still i think some pretty impressive camera work and, and lighting and blocking and all all that like it's it, it, it the message is still strong and the the picture is really vibrant really there's no punches pulled with this version uh, yeah, this is uh, probably uh, the most brutal depiction of war I can remember. I mean, that thing, I mean, right up there with Saving Private Ryan, like opening scene, um, just absolutely gutting a lot of it. And uh, a true, true testament to the uh, the set design on this, the execution of all the um, the trenches and just like the the battlefields looked so realistic. Um, yeah, and the the action scenes felt like you were really in these battles and like up close and personal for a lot of it. Um, you know the the scene where Paul stabs the guy in the the crater or the the mm -hmm. trench wherever they are, and then like shoves the mud in his mouth and tries to save him was just like I just wanted to get out of that scene so badly. I I didn't fast forward, but like I was like I I might just have to like go move past this. It's too brutal to watch and I. I War movies, I, a lot of times, I think we're like so desensitized to them because they've been so, uh, yeah. you know, commercialized in, in Hollywood and um, played up for entertainment. But at this point, is one where it really makes your stomach turn quite a few times to to see the, the scenes play out. And like you said, that's kind of the point of the movie, but or in, in of the book. But uh, I, I can't remember a depiction that really made me feel quite like this afterwards. Right, and I think uh, right off the jump too you're just thrown right into that, like watching uniforms being pulled off corpses to then be washed so they can be given to the fresh recruits that are uh, refilling the cannon fodder at the front. It's just really in your face for its darkness and just how bluntly graphic this, this war was, as I think most people would know at this point. Um, and, to immediately follow that scene up with your introduction to Paul and his buddies in Northern Germany, these, you know, 17, 18 year old young men who have this kind of rah, rah patriotism and enthusiasm for the glory of war and uh, fighting for the fatherland, fighting for Ger Germany, even though the war has been going on for several years and we are in the phase where the Germans are, on the back foot and, and in the process, process of losing the Germans and their allies. So to kind of like see the, 
that energy, that youthful exuberance thrown into this the meat grinder right right away is it is quite effective and like they do such a good job of like highlighting the absolute brutality and just terrible life that was being in the trenches you know and i think world war one is a war that hasn't been as glamorized on the screen as you said right like like growing up as a kid like i love watching war movies i love saving private ryan but i liked it for the action because i was a dumb male you know (laughs) like it's a little different and obviously we just had 1917 come out at the end of 2019 but that's a movie which as the filmmaking highlights front and center doesn't keep you in the trench Mm -hmm. okay in the western front is more grounded and i think more more realistic more to the average experience and of course this is the 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 german experience but yeah I, i just think like going through all like the various scenes and watching everything play out like if you whether you've seen the original or not or you've read the novel nothing might wow you per se but like i think it's just a really high level version of this story and i mean shout out uh Felix Kammerer, Kammerer, who plays Paul, this is his first role, you know, like very, very impressive to carry the movie in this manner. The the, the biggest actor to the average viewer, of course, would be Daniel Bruhl, a uh, fellow German who plays uh, actually a real person, Matthias, Matthias, yeah. Matthias Erzberger. Erzberger, who was a uh, politician who helped with the armistice. And I think that, I think I believe that's a change where like the showing the armistice angle and uh, watching that come to be in the war ending. I don't believe that's actually in the other movies, the other movie or or the book. I believe the book is strictly first person. But I actually liked that kind of uh, other side of the thing because I think it actually does a really good job of showing like the the political decision making at this time while you, con- directly contrasting that with just the never-ending death that was this war at this time you know so i I thought it was pretty effective to have that added in and of course brule is a great actor yeah brule is great and i I think he's really uh brings a a nice presence to this you know you mentioned like the like way that you love seeing private ryan because you were like a dumb male but like think about how that like embodies the way paul is in this Mm -hmm. movie you know he goes in and he's told that this is how your father's gonna be proud of you and like they're so excited when they go in like immediately just like hating his hating the experience and uh it's it's completely brutal they they show you everything i mean you watch his friend get set on fire by the um, flamethrower right Mm -hmm. after he surrenders you see the uh his his buddy who gets shot in the leg take the fork and jam it into his jugular in order to kill himself because he doesn't want to live to be a cripple after the war you you just see all this play out and it's so so brutal and unsettling and you know it's uh, i think similar to like the experience of world war one but i think all war in general like there's these moments of like joy and these moments of like triumph you know you think about like when they find out that the armistice is coming and they go to steal some eggs to celebrate and you know possibly a a hen and then pretty quickly his his buddy is shot (laughs) by the the farm kid and another person lost unnecessarily and then you know they're they're all looking forward to ending and immediately you get that that speech from uh who was that uh prop was that the general Uh, yeah, like the commander at the front. Yeah. yeah, and they're all just like, "No, like we're not going." And they actually show one of the people get shot because he fought back. It's just, man, just right. freaking brutal the whole time. Incredibly well done, though. I was so impressed with like the actual like filmmaking aspect of it. Yeah, totally. So I, I definitely am rooting for this to get one of those Oscar noms for international feature from category uh did you watch it in a uh, german with subtitles did you go to the dub obviously a netflix movie has myriad language options so i start i started off just uh the, my settings started off with the british english and then i switched to the dub for a while and then i was like you know I, i'm probably not going to follow continue following this so i switched back to the american english to to finish it out so i was kind of like back and forth on it what about you uh I, I stuck to german with subtitles i'm just I'm a big fan of I'd rather read the subtitles and hear the real acting than like mm. 
hear somebody else voice act and watch someone act next to that. You know, like that's just how I've always felt about it. Um, but it's not exactly like a dialogue heavy film. No. So it's probably not as big a deal as it is with some other stuff. But obviously it's most important to watch it uh, in some manner. So it doesn't really matter how you watch it, I suppose. But uh, yeah, definitely, uh, definitely a success and just a kind of a casual Netflix drop at the start of the awards run, you know? Big, uh, lucky for us, you know. 